Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. It never ceases to amaze me, how many people have bought into the atheistic lie, that they are nothing more than a biological mutant, floating around in some sort of cosmological accident. So why do you embrace such a ridiculous fairy tale? Because your teachers and professors told you that little fable, every time you step foot into their den of deception, uh, I mean, classroom. What if they told you that the moon was made of green cheese, would you have ingested that old wives tale also? Some people are so gullible, they will believe anything you tell them. Almost 75% of full grown adults, with a normal intelligence quotient, adopt the worldview of their favorite teacher. That can be a college professor, or go all the way back to grade school. That can be a good thing, or a bad thing. It depends on the accuracy and viability of their worldview. A worldview is simply the lens from which you view the world. And although there are many variations, there are only two main worldviews, theism, and atheism. You either believe in God, or you don't. And though the vast majority of people claim to believe in God, their actions and lifestyles indicate otherwise. The standard for a true believer is that you love the Lord with your whole heart, mind, and strength. Anything less is a charade, and charades won't get you into heaven. That doesn't mean that you have to attain sinless perfection, but it does mean that is your goal, your relentless pursuit. The worldview of the true believer is to wake up every morning, with a passion for service and obedience to the Creator. It is your destiny, the reason for your existence. One of the most noble pursuits for a believer is to lead others to Christ. But most believers very rarely share their faith, out of a fear of rejection. They allow the enemy to bind them in fear, and they allow those around them, to go to hell in a handbasket. It is not your job to lead others to Christ, it is your honor. If you refuse to reach out to them, God will use someone else. But there is no greater honor, no greater reward, than to be an instrument in the hands of the master. Maybe today he wants you to be a violin, and he will play a beautiful symphony with you. Maybe today he wants you to be a scalpel, and he wants to perform a heart surgery through you. Never limit God. He can do many amazing things in you, and through you, if you simply allow him. Certainly you could share a kind word, or a cup of cold water, in his name. You have to start somewhere. But being a soldier in God's army should be a progressive journey. When you first get saved, you are but a lowly private. But God wants to promote you to bigger and better battles. But most choose to stay at the lower ranks, where the pressure and risks, are less burdensome. We already have plenty of privates, we need more sergeants and lieutenants, and even generals. So sign up for duty, to serve in God's army. Then study to show yourself approved of God, a worker who needs not be ashamed, rightly dissecting the word of God. In other words, become a student of the scriptures. Get to know the real word of God, so that you can spot, detect, and expose, all counterfeits. Learn to discipline yourself. Avoid the temptation of the world. Learn to separate the important, from the essential. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Once you have a good handle on the doctrines of truth, then take up your shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit, and run fearlessly into battle. Get your marching orders, and serve the creator with fervor and passion. You're in the army now. God's army, and it's time to go to war against the deceptions of darkness. Although there are many worthy areas in which you might serve, our greatest need right now is in the area of science. Satan's most effective tool right now is science. Actually science, true science, is just the pursuit of knowledge. The division of science that is bringing in the most casualties is an atheistic branch of science, called naturalism. Atheism is a religion, and naturalism is their theology. Naturalism insists that all things happen, naturally. In other words, we have no need for God. Where they are most prevalent, and most destructive, 
is in the area of origins. Origins is simply the study of the beginning of things. Where you will find that naturalism has made most of its progress, is in the origin of the universe, the origin of life on earth, and the origin of humanity, homo sapiens sapiens. Their arguments are both complex and illogical. Their main tactic is sesquipedalian doublespeak. They talk loud and long and try to sound more intelligent than their audience. This makes their audience feel inferior, and they surrender to their misguided assumption, that the deceiver has a superior intellect. But there is an antidote for the deceiver's poison. It's called evidence. If they insist that the universe popped into existence, all by itself, from a singularity generated by the multiverse, demand evidence. If they insist that life on earth, popped into existence, all by itself, from non-living chemicals, demand evidence. If they insist that you evolved from a rock, demand evidence. Their first reaction will be astonishment, then anger. How dare you say that the emperor has no clothes? Then they will do one of two things, they will go on a diatribe of unfounded scientific claims, or they will attack your character or your qualifications. Force them back to the topic. The topic is not you, or their personal opinions, the topic is evidence. Whatever their reaction, stand your ground. Speak the truth in love, and let the chips fall where they may. Peace be unto you and your house. You are absolutely not a biological mutant, floating around in a cosmological accident. You are a divine child of the Most High God, serving in his army of born-again soldiers. This, is your call to duty. Serve well my friend, serve well.